All right. Thank you. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> there is a reminder of our antitrust policy. Don't do anything that it says not to do. Okay, so we have our usual reminders of the upcoming Hackfest, the um, planning for the uh, uh, something in first quarter of 2019, probably looking for some hosts. And then um, a reminder of the election process. So today is the first day that nominations can get sent in for um, running for TSC. Uh, hopefully you have all gotten to the point where you checked the list and made sure you're on the list and all your colleagues. Um, I'm not sure what this conversation about DEFCON 4 is about, Todd, but hopefully you can yep, wait uh, on that. And then we have our usual updates of the Composer project and then uh, training and education. Great. Hey. Um, so, so I'll mm -hmm. knock out the, the first couple. Uh, so in terms of next Hackfest, October 3rd and 4th in Montreal, right after Member Summit, please get registered. Uh, we've already seen, you know, a good number of folks there. So that's that's great to round out the rest of the year. Uh, for the APAC one in Q1 next year, we do have our APAC partner uh, sourcing venues there. So um, if there's any suggestions, please let us know. If any of you have space in, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, or beyond, let us know. Uh, but efforts underway. And I, yeah. I don't know if it's... Uh, um feasible or not, but uh, if it's possible, maybe also consider Australia, see a decent amount of blockchain news come out of there, and that would also let us hit uh, the, the southern hemisphere that I don't think we've gotten down that way yet. All right, uh, noted, good, good suggestion, Dan. All right. Um, and then onward from Hackfest, the annual TSC election will kick off just after this call. Um, so that'll be the nomination process, which will run for one week. All the details there and the timing in uh, process link that went out with the minutes uh, and the agenda for today. And so the master list uh, closed at 5 p.m. last night. So we do have our final list for that. I think it was around 650 folks or, or something like that. Um, so really great to see the growth in the community and excited for this election to get going. And what was the number last year? Tracy, do you happen to remember offhand? It was somewhere around the 330 mark. Yeah. Wow, so we more than doubled. Cool. Cool. Um, and if no questions there, uh, Brian, I think I see you on, uh, possibly muted, but if you want to talk quickly about DevCon 4. Am I, it, hi, am I unmuted now? Sorry about that. You are. There you go. Uh, okay, great. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are considering sponsoring um, the DevCon 4 conference for the Ethereum community in Prague as part of trying to build uh, more and, con and better connections with uh, the developers there. We think that that's relevant for Burrow and for Seth and for the use of uh, Burrow with Fabric and, and maybe other projects. Um, uh, in, a, in our experience, kind of sponsoring developer events like this is most meaningful when there's also speakers to those subjects at the conferences. Um, we did sponsor DEF CON 3 in um, Mexico uh, last year, and, and that was all right, but it really would have been helped if uh, you know, it had more technical content there too. So uh, I wanted to try to get a sense from the TSC as to whether there were either specific uh, folks who anticipated going to DEF CON, 3, or DEF CON 4 who thought we should be there, uh, but most importantly, who planned to submit talks uh, and if they would also be willing to help us rally, perhaps other people to submit talks. So just open for any any um, comments on that or questions or uh, volunteers of assistance or, or anything. So just for a little more context, uh, Bob here again. Um, John Walpert and myself are planning to do uh, a joint talk, um, really talking about the, the, the way that we're seeing a real blurring of the lines now, uh, you know, between 
uh, permissioned and permissionless and, and public and private. And really, the, 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 there's this uh, this sort of ongoing trend where where the hard lines that looked like they were were there a couple of years ago are really are really blurring more and more. You know, you're, you're seeing Corda doing a a public network now, and then Cordite having uh, uh, a, a token project as well, and then um, with with EVMs more generally, uh, you know, starting to span those areas. Um, so there'll be at least that. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Bob. Any other thoughts or comments? Even if it's just yes, we think we should be there, and the most importantly, yeah, no, I, women. yeah, I, I may be in Europe around that time. Um, I'll have to check with the uh, travel gods. Yeah, this is Dan. Um, uh, likewise, I'm not sure if I, I will personally be there or not, but I think it's a good idea for Hyperledger to have some presence there and, and help show the this this blurring of the lines uh, across uh ethereum and in our platforms i mean we certainly have the connection with with burrow and and seth and and some of the other platforms integrations with with burrow like uh, fabrics so um it seems like that would be a, a topic that that people uh, aren't maybe widely aware of over in, in the, the DevCon sphere that would benefit from knowing that. Okay, great. I don't want to take too much time, so uh, maybe I'll follow up um, with an email to the PSC just as a, as a nudge to, to, um, for further comment, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good then about um, uh, participating in one form or another. And, Maybe we see if there's a, like a side event we can do or a meetup or, um, you know, even just a drink up <laughs> somewhere um, uh, during the event. It is Prague. It's got good beer. <laughs> That's it, Todd. All right. Sounds good. Um, the next was the quarterly project updates. I don't know if anyone from Composer's on. Uh, we've pinged a few times, but haven't heard back, and it doesn't look like anyone so, made it. <clears throat> to Simon yet. was here, but I don't see him. Um, and uh, Caroline is not, so if, let me just Simon is not on. Neither is Caroline. Right. Um, okay, he may be on his way back then to, they may be, tra he, he, Simon may be traveling because he was here in Raleigh this week and um, so he may be traveling back and I don't see Caroline on. So. Okay. Um, they, whatever. <clears throat> No, nothing made it into Wiki, and I know Tracy pinged again yesterday. Okay, I'm probably worth moving on. All right, um, so then next week we'll have Composer and Indy. Uh, we'll send reminders again. Um, otherwise, next up is uh, Training and Education Working Group, and I think, uh, Kelly, you're on from there, correct? Yes. Awesome. All right, I'll drop the Sorry, I've got, uh, rocket chat. Okay. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I've got um, fire smoke voice big time. Um, the group is moving along. We have consistent representation at each of the meetings. It has dipped since we moved from 10 a.m. PST to 8 a.m. PST due to several requests from China. And the weekly or by Every time we get together is about 
you know what, I think I noted in there about 26 people and now it's about 18 people. There is a consistent two or three additional people each time. One thing that we're trying right now is to send out updates for possible volunteer contribution for people who are not on the call because they're not maybe checking the minutes or checking the videos. One other thing that we've noted is that we have more learners than we have people who are at this stage contributors. And so it, there's a little bit of a round and around, and we talked about that the last time we reported out. We're trying to create some learning materials so that our team can contribute more. And then one of the ideas that we had was noted, which is when I was taking a look at the global summit presentations, I saw a lot of potential fit and, and thinking that we can connect with maybe 20 or 25 people there and then see if they would like to kind of partner with a member of the training and education work group and together kind of repurpose the material for learning on a broader basis. And so that might enable people who are in the training and education work group to feel confident in the details and to help with readability and the presentation and go through and check the steps if there's a related tutorial, et cetera. So we're trying to kind of figure out how to keep everybody engaged when they've got about a one year learning curve in front of them. Most people finish the edX first course and they're excited and they're ready to go. And their next question is, you know, what, what is GitHub and what is Docker? And so the, and Tracy can clarify, but I think that we're moving forward. It's not at the level that we had hoped, but we do have a handful of people who are experienced and we are connecting them. So for example, we have one person um, who we asked if Aroha needed any help and one person replied. And so we've got a partnership going there. And then our co-lead for the group is working on some concepts and he is getting some input from additional people in the other working groups. So based on what we've seen so far to connect a person to a person, whether that be from the training and education work group to a presenter at a conference or from the training and education work group to a member of another working group, seems to be the way that we're able to actually get something in development. Otherwise, we have a very enthusiastic group of learners sprinkled with some experienced contributors. Tracy, did you want to add anything or does anyone have a question? Questions for Kelly? One thing that will help us is when you think about volunteers, so whether it be for DEF CON 4 or whether it be there's a particular new set of documentation that needs some eyes and needs people to go through and actually run through those materials, then it could be we can connect you with one or two people and then that purposeful assignment is where we're kind of getting more feedback. We have tried action items many times. We've tried spreadsheets with action items. It's not that we're just chit-chatting, but we just are not that experienced. Thanks, that's, that's interesting to hear, and it does reflect, um, I think, one of the risks that, that myself and maybe some of the others on the TSC had uh, when, when we were starting this working group is, is whether, um, whether there can be an effective way for, for the working group to represent and create materials about the projects without uh, the direct engagement of the maintainers from those projects. So it sounds like that, that is a bit of an obstacle for you. Am I hearing that correctly? Um, I think so, but I think just <clears throat> it is as a byproduct because if I had to pick any one thing, and of course there's never any one thing, then at the end of the edX course, participants in that course are encouraged to join a working group. And up comes the name training and education. 
and other names that are unfamiliar only introduced within the course. And so training and education feels both familiar and seems like where I can get more training and education. Because if you've never been a part of a working group, that makes sense. Oh, I just finished this course. I really want to learn more. There's a group on training and education. And when they get in the group and they're excited and they're participating, then they realize, oh, we're developing training and education. They're not at that point and they really want to contribute. And so what you're saying resonates more because there's a level of enthusiasm and lack of confidence than it's really any of their intent. So by partnering up with someone, they seem to be very open for you know, creating presentations or going through tutorials or working on readability, um, maybe even doing some translating, but they're not really ready. There, I would say there's maybe 10, or I put on the note a little bit, or in the wiki, a little bit less than 10 who are really writing and I'm doing this and doing this, who are in really a product development mode. But I think that the possibility of teaming or the possibility of us, I mean, I'm creating training, but I'm creating training for the training group to begin to learn how to work with Hyperledger rather than I'm creating materials on our platforms. Okay, thanks. That helps. It's nice to hear the enthusiasm here. Um, and also, uh, I think each of the, the working groups spends, I don't know, a, a few months, maybe even longer, uh, getting their legs underneath them. So perhaps uh, uh, that enthusiasm will, will find its way towards some, um, some uh, work products as, as the months proceed here. Yeah, I think so. And we have a couple of work products going on, and that for others in the group to see those, then they're starting to engage a little bit more. But I think that the materials that I'm working on right now that we'll go over on Monday um, will help. And then there, if I would say anything at this point, I would say that we have a good group and that I need to do more technical onboarding for them. Not so much who we are, what our purpose is, why open source is important, everything about Hyperledger and its contributions, they're all in on that. I mean, zealots almost. But I think that what I'm trying to put together is a technical onboarding where there are, uh, you know, say six different things and feel free to skip any that you don't need. But without that technical onboarding, they're kind of waiting, waiting, waiting to be able to have the skills or the confidence to contribute. You know, it's a little bit off the cuff, but uh, I wonder if um, one way to engage with the projects is if, if there's frequently asked questions that are raised in these meetings or, or themes for each of the projects, you might then be able to reach out uh, periodically to, to each of the projects with, with some feedback about um, something's not understood or not understood well about that particular project. Okay. And I was going to add to um, Kelly, even though I think, you know, right now you're concerned about developing, say, this GitHub material for how you do, um, you know, GitHub commits and, and those sorts of things, pull requests. Uh, I think in, in the end, that's going to actually be useful for the Hyperledger community as well, because um, it, it'll help people who actually want to do uh, contributions to documentation or contributions to uh, the source base, right? Uh, I know we have a lot of people um, right now who are really interested in labs, but have never really used GitHub. Um, and so they're trying to use GitHub inside of um, the web browser and, and that's causing them problems because they can't do um, their sign offs, right? Their DCO sign offs. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, even even though what, what you're doing right now seems like it might not be useful, I, I, I want to let you know that it is useful and will be useful for um, a wide range of people. Oh, excellent. That's great. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. And I think anytime you take an engagement that is like one on one and can turn it into an improvement in the standard docs or, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, I, I know you call it technical onboarding. I mean, hopefully it's about creating materials that allow for greater amounts of self onboarding, both for the people who show up to help with the, with the community, uh, with, the, with the working group 
but also then on the, in the standard docs that, that improve things for everyone. And agreed that there's probably just a gap in that, you know, next step after the introductory material. That's why I'm excited about the work on the getting started guide, and we could always use more, you know, kind of video, kind of screencasts of, of kind of in getting your dev environment set up and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. And I would say that I'm calling it a technical onboarding, but yeah, it needs to be self-driven. And then they can also join the TNE working group rocket chat so that, you know, we can ask questions there. As you say, I'm more of a question, not a teaching, more of a, a support for self-learning. I'm really grateful that you're involved in this and that that this uh, working group is very active in helping people up, up that up that learning curve. So thank you very thank you for being being there and 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 doing what you're doing. Good, that's great to hear because I'm I'm thinking we're a little bit on the turtle patrol. Oh. All right, <clears throat> thanks, Kelly. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Not for Kelly, but uh, if you aren't speaking, please do go on mute. Get some background noise here. Yeah, somebody's working a hard, a heavy bag or something. <laughs> I was just gonna say to Kelly that um, you know, from the performance and scale working group, we tend to have a bunch of you know really deep technical experts on the call, as well as people that are there to learn. So uh, that's fairly standard, I think, on, on a lot of this yeah. type of work. I think that's right. All right. If there's nothing else, then um, next week we have the public sector working group update, um, as well as, uh, as Todd noted, uh, Composer and Indie. So with that, I will um, give everybody uh, 35 minutes back. Thank you all. I'm going to be out for the next uh, two weeks, and so hopefully Brian and Todd can carry the carry the mantle in the interim. Um, and I'll see you all on the other side. Have fun, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, nice week, everybody. Bye. Send, po sure. send postcards. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>